let's take you through the news of the sad exit of a former military governor of Lagos State and old Imo State, Ndubisi Kanu. He was born on November the 3rd, 1943. Mr. Kanu would have been 78 years old this year. He was an accomplished military officer, having had a successful tenure in the Nigeria Naval Command, a graduate. Uh, a graduate, rather, of uh, National Defense Academy, India. He served in various leadership positions, both in core naval postings and in special assignments. He was a member of the Supreme Military Council between 1975 to 1976. He was the first military governor of Imo State, that's uh, between 1976 to 1977. He was a military governor of Lagos State in 1977 to 1978. At one point, he was the director of uh, Fidelity Bank PLC, amongst uh, other private sector institutions. Well, joining us to talk about the life and times of uh, the late uh, Ndubisi Kanu is uh, broadcast journalist Ifi Onyebili. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. And happy Same New year. year. Happy New Year <laughs> to you too. Now, let's talk about <laughs> Ndubisi Kano, yeah. who passed yesterday. That uh, news came as uh, a shocker to a lot of persons. Um, and also the fact that um, a major loss to Nigeria, as uh, some have put it, because of who he represented, or who he represents and uh, what he stood for. Uh, while he was in active service and afterwards, you know, fighting for democracy and all of that. Just uh, tell us. Um, yes, of course, I've been reading some of the tributes, you know, that uh, people have been doing in his honor. Uh, of course, the president has reached out, the Lagos state governor. And I just hope that the Imo state government is planning something, even though he's not from there as it is. Because when you look at the history, he's credited with being the person who actually started the planning of what you call the Owere that we see today. Mm. And, you know, for a man like that, he started something. You now begin to ask yourself the question, why it is that there are no roads in quote when you look at it right there in Owere. But I'm just hoping that the government that's there now will understand that for a man like this who has actually passed, he has a history with Imo State, uh, something needs to be done in his honor. But let's move away from uh, Imo State where he was governor at some point, then he was moved to Lagos. Lagos. Um, this was a man who was at the forefront when you talk about fighting for democracy as it yes. is. At some point, he was uh, a leader in Nadeko, yeah. and he was right there, uh, you know, in the face of, of former uh, head of state, General Ibrahim Babangida, to Pushing say to him... Pushing for the return to democracy. That is it. And the actualization of, uh, the you June know, 12th. the June 12th thing. So that was a man who... You would expect that he would side with his colleagues to say, look, let's continue with what it was that we're doing. But the man said, look, things started to get bad when, uh, you know, with that Babangida administration and all of that. He wasn't scared to say all of those things. Mm -hmm. He had to say it, and he kept talking about the reasons why things need to get better and why democracy had to be entrenched. So uh, for the man to have passed, no one can say, look, let's hold him back. Of he didn't have to go and all of that. <laughs> but he's gone, and I'm just hoping that they, they get to immortalize him as it is. So that, and that leads me to my next question. How mm. do you think he should be immortalized in these two states, Lagos, and perhaps he must Well, Lagos has actually, when, when I heard he had passed, you know, I had this urge to go spend some time at, at the, the park, park, you know, that the Lagos state government actually uh, opened in his it's name awesome. while yeah. he was still alive, you know. But these are things that um, people should think about when we talk about places like Imo State and maybe Abia State, of course, where he's from. They should think about immortalizing him. Then again, we need to also understand that we have heroes here in this country. How many children know about the man called Ndubisi Godwin Kanu? How many mm. children know? So we need to begin to also teach our children about some of these things. And I think it should start with, you know, children in primary schools, get to talk to them about these people. You can't keep talking to them about people who they read about in books, you know, foreign books and all of that. Let's also have, you know, literature where they get to read about such people. Now Lagos had, had done something before the man died. Yes. Mm. Now he's passed. 
pass. I just, I have a feeling, I want to believe that the government will also think about something else. But they've taken the lead. Mm. So it's for the South East now to say, look, we had an illustrious son who had a voice when you talk about the issues relating and regarding uh, democracy. Let's also find a way to etch his name, you know, put his name somewhere so that that name lives on and people get to talk about him. Now, talking about this person, that's so much that has been said about his persons. And I am wondering, because like you have rightly pointed out that this thing should be taught in schools. Yes. But what lessons can perhaps those who want to be leaders of tomorrow, those who are in office as well, what lessons do you think they can learn or draw from the person the BC can? It's about doing your job when mm. you're there as a politician or someone who's uh, leading a people. You need to understand that you're there to do a job. So it's about divorcing yourself from everything that will negate the reason that you got in there in the very first place. You can't say you stand for something and when things are going wrong, you're looking the other way. That's a man who was in, the, you know, he was, he was a military man as it is. But he didn't say, let me side with my colleagues mm. who don't think that democracy is something that can work in Nigeria. Which is what we see now. You understand? But he came out, he put his voice out there to say, this has to happen. He became a leader in the Nadeko days and all of that. So I think people should understand that the project should be Nigeria, not mm. any one man Which is what as it is. a lot of uh, people have been harping on, that we need to separate ourselves from all of the biases that yes. we see playing out and that are, you know, widening those fault lines that yes. we have been talking about, talking about religion, talking about tribe and all Culture, of it. Culture, tradition and all of that. You know, for him to have run a place like Lagos, you know, based on Emo, all of these 76, 77, he was in Lagos and all of that, you'll understand that this was a man, I would want to call a detribalized Nigerian. We need to look away from this idea of ethnicity, religion. I saw the news where people were talking about um, Kuka. Mm -hmm. And the FG has come out now, which is the right thing. And the man is allowed to, you know, be who he wants to be and talk about issues of governance as it is. So as you have rightly said, we need to look away from culture, tradition, ethnicity, where you're from or where you're not from. The idea is to find a way to move the project Nigeria forward. And I think that's what the man uh, Ndubisi Kano stood for, and people should try to emulate that. But uh, if we quickly, before we let you go, why do you think it's so difficult for people to separate themselves from this biases that we have pointed out. It, it's seeming so difficult. It's, it's difficult. You know when Nigerians as it is, when, <laughs> when something goes wrong, you're looking for one person to call, okay, I have this uncle who's somewhere, I have this aunt who's somewhere who's influential and all of that. We need to, some things about our cultures, our traditions should actually, you know, change, move a step further or, you know, some of those things need to be put behind. That's who we are. That's the way we are. Children want to get into school now. You have to look for someone to call someone. The idea is for people to get whatever you want on merit. Mm. And if you're not able to perform, as I always say, show yourself the door or you ask the person to take a bow. So the issue of culture, tradition, and, you know, tying ourselves to, to think so much, not looking at the essence of why we're there, it is something we should work on. And I hope, I'm just saying that if we do that, things will turn out differently. Absolutely. Broadcast journalist, Ifeonyo Egbili, thank you for speaking with us. Thank you for having me.